through the entire scene. Casey will be trying to show us the half-eaten chips in his mouth because this movie's idea of comic relief measures exactly that of a four-year-old's. Right, and again, the thing that's great about this is that the movie doesn't know how to play comedy. So it's like, yeah, I guess I'll see you later at the party. And Casey's like, eh. <laughs> I'm bad at chips. <laughs> Honestly, you're bad at chips. Is that what you said? You're bad at them. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we never thought it would last this long. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath and Right, Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Medium. And, medium. <laughs> <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bostic. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Rare. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I, I can see how well done got left out of this uh, discussion altogether. <laughs> Speaking of which, Heath. What will we be breaking down today? We watched Cutback. That's the name of a surfing move, as I understand it. Mm-hmm. And the movie is the story of a surfer who never once does a cutback in any <laughs> literal or metaphorical way. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, so Eli, would you like to tell everybody why we won't be watching the movie that we announced last week, which was the 1998 oh, Dennis Quaid movie Savior? That would be because it is not the hilariously bad 1976 Muslim movie, The Message. Right. No, it's not. Because you misremembered Heath's suggestion and instead landed on a different movie about the genocide in Bosnia. Yes, I did. I did do that. <laughs> okay. And, and, and Eli, at what point did you admit this mistake to Heath and myself? 30 minutes into the movie when the protagonist murders a child on stage. Exactly. There. Okay. So <laughs> apologies to those of you who thought we were going to yuck it up about the Bosnian <laughs> genocide this week. I have week. my first 30 minutes of notes. The kid <laughs> falls <laughs> funny, Eli said. <laughs> he does. He falls. He's very young. And Eli, <laughs> setting that one aside for a moment, how bad was this movie? I mean, way more fun than Savior. He okay. Kills a bunch of people in a mosque. <laughs> yep. Like three minutes. In, he cuts off an old lady's face. A oh, baby okay. died. All right, Eli. Eli. Sorry. Right. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> well, not Savior. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you loved Point Break, but there was too much acting going on for you, <laughs> you will love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's got surfers and cops. It's just the yeah, same. Exactly. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would, Noah. I would. <laughs> best worst movie poster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one you've copied and pasted into the notes. You might here. want to Google this at home if you're following. Along. Please Google this poster at home. We're looking at it right now. So it's got the like. The face of the main two characters looking, you know, into the distance like it, you know, like a movie poster might. Mm-hmm. But there's a few other components to the movie poster. First of all, there's a, you know, a quote from a, a reviewer. It says life changing in big letters. And then like, I can't read the rest. And then I can't read even more. It's even smaller. The person's name and mm-hmm. where they're yeah, right. from. So from Twitter. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. also it's the winner in big letters of the San Diego Christian Film Festival Christian <laughs> and they got the People's Choice Award for that. I have no idea what that is. Their motto, their tagline is one life, one decision, <laughs> which is the saddest YOLO ever. Yep. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is my favorite part. It's supposed to be like showing us action. And there's a fucking old <laughs> Volvo wagon. <laughs> yep. As if it's driving in an action scene. No, it's not. I've watched the movie. There's no action. No, nope. I do love Volvos. I've, ha- I believe I owned this car in a different color. It's like an 84 shitty Volvo wagon, which is great, actually. But that's their like action car. It's so but, good. I'm surprised it doesn't have a headlight out. Yeah. <laughs> you got to see this thing. There's, there are four 
different pieces of text and four fonts. Yep. At least four fonts. Yep. If we're not counting the sub fonts in those oh, fonts. Oh, and one of them is a weird cursive that's the same color as the background right there. It's so bad. Yeah, yeah. that's the YOLO. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it could very well be one lick with no C, one decision based on that <laughs> yeah, font. Exactly. Come on, life one, decision one. That's Lodo. It, it's sayable. <laughs> like right now it's Olad. It doesn't even... <laughs> The Stupid. characters look like they're out of a telenovela slash porn, and then there's like a 90 year old guy surfing. There. It's it's worth your it's worth your admiration. This uh-huh. poster. <laughs> All right, so I was gonna go with best worst scene introductions. Yeah. So like nine out of ten scenes from this movie will start with the two characters involved in the scene. Just one comes in from stage left, the other from stage right. They meet in the middle. One goes, hey, the other one goes, hey. Yep. <laughs> it's just over <laughs> and over yeah. again. They exit scenes even worse than that. We're going to get to yeah, one that's just that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> And speaking of which, I was going to go with best worst last minute attempt to have a plot. Yes. This movie meanders around its plot for, I'm going to say, 90 minutes of its 120 minute runtime. That's And then, okay. like Michael Scott trying to end a fucking improv scene, <laughs> makes a <laughs> bold choice about what its movie is about. Well, the thing is, is that the script keeps accidentally pulling the rug out from under the plot as it has so far been established, right? Yep. They keep doing shit, and then you can, like, see, you can just feel the writer go, oh, fuck, then this is about nothing. <laughs> this is a hate crime against the plot like four different times it's it's like he has tying up his plot thread accidental Tourette's right it's yeah. just like <laughs> man I hope I make it to the big skate off no we're not doing that this week oh, oh shit now uh, gotta do more movie to find a different plot now uh, no all right, well, I'll tell you what. We need to fill a whole episode with a movie that didn't have a plot. So we're going to take a break for a strategy meeting, but we're back in a flash with all the oh, hello there that is cut back. Okay, how about one of these? Excellent. Put it right in. Hey, guys, what you doing? What's with all the boxes? Oh, hey, no, Heath and I were just putting prizes in our Magic Spoon cereal. What's Magic Spoon cereal? It's the guilt-free version of the delicious cereals you love as a kid. And now we're putting adult prizes in them, too. Like this one. It's the good charger. Ooh. Or being remembered at that place you go for lunch. Oh, I love that. Right? Me too. And you'll love Magic Spoon. It's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. It's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Plus, you can build your own box. Available flavors to build your very own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, and cinnamon. So there's a cereal that's delicious like when you were a kid, but nutritious like you need when you're an adult? That's right. I'm in even without the prizes. I thought you might be. So just go to magicspoon.com slash gam to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code gam at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash gam and use the code gam to save $5. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. So we don't need the prizes? Nope. No, I'm already sold. Oh, man, I was going to put in one of these. Oh. I think that, that prize might be a little too adult. You know what I mean? Yeah, like save that one for the Adam and Eve ad, dude. Fair. Dudes, dudettes, if I can have your attention, please. Righteous. Raw. Raw, indeed. As you know, my dad has finally agreed to fund my surf movie about the time my best friend in the whole world, Knucklefucker, died in a car accident, and now I'm all into Jesus and stuff. Awesome, dude. Raw. Yeah, so here's the movie, okay? I'm like a surfer dude, and I don't love Jesus, but then my best friend Knucklefucker dies, and I'm like, whoa. Maybe I do love Jesus. I'm done. That's the movie. I just described it. Oh, dude, that's like, huh, it's like I, uh, the best movie I've ever heard of. Like, totally. Right? Oh. oh. So, so like, one thing. Uh, Yeah, what's that? So, okay, so, like, I was thinking maybe we should, like, use his name in the movie, right? Casey? 
Just, I was just like, his mom might watch it, you know? Uh, so. We did put Nogglefucker on the tombstones. So. No, ah. we did, but like she was super yeah. she was super mad about that, though. That's true. That's true. She was kind of mad about that. Raw. Raw. <laughs> Raw. Raw. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up with, and here's hoping you love the shit out of this, because we're going to have a lot of it, a little bit of ocean B-roll. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So we watch the ocean. We meet the buddies at the center of the story. Luke and Casey. Luke is our main character, and Casey is the comic relief, I guess. Who a lot Asterisk. of there are deep central questions to what Casey is in yeah. this movie. <laughs> well, and the dialogue is so weird. It's like they think that they're doing shtick, but they're just having a banal conversation. Yeah, it's like David Mamet wrote a boring conversation you overheard at a bait shop. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Casey is saying, all right, today's the day. You know what I'm talking about, right, Luke? And I was like, oh, they're going to, you know, like blow each other. Like, yeah. that's, <laughs> blow each other today? that's cool. Yeah, I will Get say to Heath's credit, this movie is a fantastic outline for a gay porn that never happens. Yeah. Several gay porns that never happened. Yeah. Crazy so billionaire money. But what he means by that is that this is the day that Casey is finally going to overcome his fear of the ocean and get out there and surf. But spoiler <laughs> alert, he's not going to. There might as well be a shark hiding in the backseat of the car. Being like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nothing's going to go wrong. Go, go ahead. <laughs> so and this funny thing is, okay, so we get to the beach and, and Luke is out surfing and Casey just can't get up the guts to go out there. But And they're playing it like a silly little quirk, but it's, but it's a debilitating phobia. That's what they're showing us, right? And I would like to argue this. This is the through line of Casey's character is something horrifyingly tragic happens with Casey and the rest of the movie is like, oh, that Casey. At yeah. one point, <laughs> he is unable to chew food yep. like an adult and we're supposed to be like, oh, we all know that guy. Yeah, yeah right. It, it's supposed to be bad. Like, he's he's got a phobia and he can't quite step into the ocean. But it was hilarious because we were watching Eli Bosnick stepping into a pool. In okay, a yes, Stop we were. Yeah. We were, actually, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we watch uh, Luke surfs for one eighteenth of a second, and then we we leave the beach and they exposit a little on the drive. I wrote in my notes like, "Wow, I can't believe we're high school seniors and you really want to join the surf team, but your parents think it's a waste of time." <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we're putting the elevator pitch for this movie on the screen while we yeah. drive. <laughs> <laughs> and and Luke says, oh, "I don't want to think about college. I just want to surf." And I was like, "Yeah," said. Every actor in every movie we do, definitely <laughs> this one. Mm -hmm. This is also where I got very worried that this movie was going to ask me to know the difference between good and bad surfing. Yeah, no, it it, it teases you like that, but don't worry, that will never, yeah, no. ever come up. Yeah. So okay, so and and then we 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 meet Luke's dad as he's pulling into the driveway. We, he's a cop, and we know this because as he gets out of the car, he puts a gun in the back of his pants. <laughs> Every person who does this, I'm rooting so hard for it to go off. Every yes. time I see this. Yes. Every yes. single time. Skidmark and you know down. what? Statistically, it does. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes. Statistically, you are missing an ass cheek because of that gun. Statistically, cops have holsters for those things. What the <laughs> fuck? Jesus, you cheap-ass movie. The other thing that I loved about this is they apparently balanced the video camera on a tree branch for this shot because <laughs> yes. it's like bobbing up and down. <laughs> and it's such a weird... So he mom's leaving just as he's pulling in. And this is the first time the two of these characters interact. And there's so much hatred and animosity between the two of them that must just exist between the two actors, right? Because it's not <laughs> relevant to the plot at this point well, or anything. <laughs> yeah, and... Dad almost gets hit by his wife's car. Yes. In their blocked out scene. She clearly was like, I'm going to fucking hit him. I hate this guy. Goddamn much. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm writing in my notes. I'm like, oh, uh, so, okay. So nobody ever notices dad. She almost backs over him. But no, that was just a fuck up in the filming. <laughs> yep. In, in fairness to her, he's wearing sunglasses, those shitty wraparound asshole yeah. old guy sunglasses mm -hmm. that are clearly bulletproof in the ad on Facebook <laughs> that he clicked on. <laughs> And then so we we wrap that scene up. Then we cut over to Luke and Casey sitting on the stairs eating slacker food like a couple of slackers. Oh, they're making school is hard small talk here. And I quote, adding is easy. It's the square roots you got to worry about. What? Yeah. Just to be clear, these are high school seniors. Mm -hmm. One of them has bombed 
the arithmetic test. Yes. <laughs> That's what's happened. Adding is what the, te- yeah, right, right. And also there's this weird moment where like we in rapid succession, like people keep walking out of the school and he, and, and, Casey's like, oh, that's your new rival. Oh, that's your love interest. Oh, that's your love interest's friend, etc. And I'm like, you guys know that this bit only works like if the main character is the new kid at school, right? Like, like he, <laughs> right? They both have gone to this school for the same amount of. Why is Casey so much more plugged into new people? <laughs> In fairness to well, everything I get to see one of them drink a Capri Sun and it made me <laughs> okay. yes. Yes. Blast from the past. Okay. He drinks a Capri Sun and he has a, an old Volvo like in the movie poster. <laughs> yeah. There are smoother axe murders than Casey drinking a Capri Sun <laughs> in this movie. And I just want to point it out here. It will never matter, but surfboard rival is my favorite non-plot point of the movie. Yes. This is where it's introduced is Casey's like, oh, that's that's your rival. To say they are rivals would be like saying Heath and I are rivals on this podcast. They will <laughs> casually interact a couple of times yeah. back and forth. Yeah, that's all right. Matt. So uh, I guess you're my guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> Extent of the rivalry. And then <laughs> to end the scene, the bell rings and Casey says, is that the bell? And I wrote in my notes. Well, I certainly hope so. Casey. Yeah, what the fuck else would it be, dude? <laughs> dude, you bombed an arithmetic. T- you don't need to worry. You can just surf. You yeah. don't have to worry about college. I promise. <laughs> you you weren't sure if that was a bell a fucking from your school. <laughs> and adding is hard. Well, don't worry about college, buddy. So that's the thing, though, is that they're so bad at ending scenes that they constantly have to do that. Somebody will be like, oh, wait, was that? Is that the next scene? I'm, they need me for that. Sorry. <laughs> So then we cut from the scene of Luke and Casey slacking ass together to a scene where Luke and Casey are going to slack ass together in a different fucking place. <laughs> Fuck you. They're in his garage now. He's he's sanding or whatevering, waxing surfboards. I don't know what the fuck you do to a surfboard. He's doing that, though. All right. So we, we cut over to his job where he still hasn't shown up for work. Darn it. <laughs> so he's a pizza delivery guy for you know pizza brand pizzas yep and uh he's late again classic teenage shenanigans yeah we spent about nine minutes just being told as the audience this is the concept of his job he delivers pizzas that's it yep. <laughs> so slow but yeah. his first delivery is useful <laughs> to the plot i guess his first delivery is to uh, another character he knows. So that worked out. And yeah, that other character has information about a potential plot arc. <laughs> so they talk about that. So and, and so he's bringing in this huge stack of pizzas to this surf shop, right? There are what I, I counted five large pizzas and then a smaller box, I assume breadsticks or something like that. So he gets to the guy who owns the surf shop and the guy's like, uh, how much is it? He goes, forty eight fifty. And I'm like, could you guys not look it up? How much that much Couldn't pizza would be? Guess it's, how much? Uh... <laughs> why, why would you? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you motherfuckers have ordered pizzas. Yeah. And they have this joke about it, right? Like they don't, they don't just fuck it up. They spend a good six minutes of the scene with surf shop owner being like, Whoa, remember when pizzas were four bucks a piece? And I was like, No, and neither do you. You're in your fucking thirties, man. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But so this character, I never did figure out this character's name. The surf shop owner character explains that there's a, a spot opening up on the local surf team and he thinks Luke should try out for it. Oh. Uh, Luke also sees the surfboard that has all the extra surfiness in it that he loves so much in this okay. fucking Patterson, Noah. It's a yeah. Patterson. <laughs> yeah, I could not understand. Like, I went down a rabbit hole of trying to understand what makes a surfboard good and just found a bunch of ads that made me deeply unhappy with my life choices. Just like, what up, brah? Are you looking for the ultimate in surf technology? And I was like, no. Delete history. Delete history. This movie's (laughs) fucked up my ads quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, and he gets back to the pizzeria. There's this dumbass bit where he gets back to the pizzeria. He's done with his deliveries and the boss goes, you forgot to deliver one of your pizzas. He's like, oh, I sure did because I'm such a bad employee. Because I didn't look next to me and notice <laughs> right. that there were still pizzas there. Wouldn't you check the entire one thing in your job you didn't do? Just yeah. go ahead and <laughs> you much, finish that up. I should do that. Yeah. Are you bad at arithmetic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. That's true. The kid can't add. There's no square roots in this job, but still. 
Okay, so then we cut to Luke's mom perusing the Bible. Every time a scene opens with this woman in it, except for that first one, she will be reading about And the only reason she wasn't in that first one is because she was backing out of a driveway. Right, she was trying to commit vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> Honestly, though, she was backing out like she was reading the Bible. So. <laughs> <laughs> also worth pointing out, mom is slightly younger than Luke. Yes, yep. uh-huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And not great at reading the Bible. We've become connoisseurs at this point. Yeah, no, she's kind of flipping pages backwards and forwards like it was a pick-a-path adventure or something. <laughs> no, my finger was on the page. I didn't get eaten by the Yeti <laughs> or Joshua. <laughs> so, yeah, but so Luke's late and, and Dad's late. So when they finally get there, Mom has to say passive-aggressive grace. Oh, my God. Passive-aggressive grace is fantastic. <laughs> and, then, and then there's the awkward pause after grace. And Dad's like, yeah, oh, amen. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah, no amen to my dick being tiny and you hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. I hate this marriage. I fucking want to die. It was really hard to tell, though, what exactly she was saying because no one would, like had the guts, I guess, to tell that woman that mumbling under her breath wasn't doing it for the microphone. So you could just <laughs> barely understand her in almost all of her scenes. Yeah. So they have this dumbass dinner conversation, though, that boils down to they want him to go to college, but he just wants to surf. Darn it. Oh, is there a conversation <laughs> more boring than you guys don't believe in my surf dreams? <laughs> <laughs> he becomes Alma for the rest of the movie. Just like, I want to surf. Go yeah, on. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to go to college. I want to be a podcast surfer. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he storms away from the table. And I wrote in my notes, see, this is the difference between Goys and Jews. Jews finish their food no matter what fight they had at the dinner table. Okay. <laughs> So. I could, I, someone could t finish telling me they wish I was an abortion. I'd be like, all right, well, when I'm done with this kugel, I will be stomping <laughs> away. I mean, you know, it's not just a Jewish thing, by the way. <laughs> so hungry people. <laughs> so, uh, so Luke drives off to, to slack some more. We watch him drive for a fucking while. <laughs> oh, the music here is rough. It's I wrote so my notes, sad. music notes, sound garden of Eden. <laughs> he's, he's being all my good. He's like, I'm going to go drive and listen to. Christian soft rock yeah. for five minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the hold music for Neo Hitler youth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He's on the phone with him. Well, and what's so fucked up is we, and we'll see we'll see this over and over again in the movie. They didn't know how to like arrange a piece of music for the time that they needed, so they had to keep like expanding out the montages and putting in weird establishing shots to make it match up to the music they had. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> we get a little more surfing in this montage. And can uh -huh. I just say? Maybe it's just this movie. I I don't watch a lot of surfing movies, but does surfing always look worse than it seems like it should? Yes. I always feel like something cooler <laughs> should happen. Well, so here's the thing. Surfing, I'm sure, is super fun to do, but even world-class surfers are kind of boring to watch after a minute or two, and these are not world-class surfers, right? Yeah, because you're like, oh, look at it. You, you got up on the wave there. You're standing on the board. Oh, you fell. Oh, that was it. That was yeah, the whole that was, uh, thing. Now you've... Falling down. You going to the left? <laughs> no. You going to do no. a cut back? Go fuck myself? Because that's in the title? Cool. You're not going to do that. I'm pretty sure we actually never see anyone land like a trick of any sort in this entire movie. No. No. no they start several yep, tricks. A couple and of cut. times. It's but the best. like, even that we barely even get. <laughs> they had a bunch of like stock footage surf clips. Without success in it. Yep. <laughs> no, it's not the actors. Well, upsplash.com doesn't give you the good surfing tricks yes. for free. So. <laughs> right, yeah. right, exactly. By the way, right here, I was like, okay, calling it now, minimum five more surf montages. Oh, and you nailed it. You, yes. you nailed it. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I didn't write it in the notes at this moment, but as soon as I saw that in your notes, I was like, I'll take the over. <laughs> so now he's finishing up at work. It's time for a little boss wisdom, right? Yeah, and I love this actor because he is the I can't modulate the volume of my voice SNL bit unironically. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, he's very drill sergeant-y. You know, he's like, oh, Luke, you've got to have a plan. The life will get very messy if you don't have a plan. I'm like, I've never, I've literally never had, I don't know about you guys, maybe you had a plan at some point. I've never ever had a plan at any point in my life. Sorry, Luke, I don't think you, you, you're paying attention. Let me get some uh, piano music real quick. Uh, <laughs> you gotta honor your parents like in the Bible. 
Yeah. Yes, yes. Let's, gruff, let's start with helpful. Christianity being undeniably correct, and then we can move on from there. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where the movie really establishes, like, don't worry, we're a Christian movie, because they have this fantastic moment where he's like, you know, God says you got to honor your parents, but, but... God also made you a surfer. So, you know, <laughs> you get a <laughs> yeah, huh, balance that shit out. <laughs> he ends the speech with like, okay, well, you just need a plan to appease God. And Luke's like, I'll uh, God surf. And he's like, nope, no, no, yes. no, no. <laughs> you need to go to college, please. Can I surf with God? Maybe night school. Well, and I love his explanation of why you need to go to college. He's like, well, just look at me. I went to college and I worked real hard and now I own a shitty ass pizza place i come home every night smelling like grease and i know that for the rest of my life i'm let's put a dominoes over here away from bankruptcy yeah right <laughs> but live in the fucking dream here man all i do is give these speeches to kids like you it's my entire <laughs> role it's ridiculous so all right so the, the next day casey and luke are at a record store so that we can start wondering when this movie is. They're buying LPs, too. They're not at a music store flipping through anything else. No, literally, they're they're buying LPs. Yep. I wanted, I wanted to see them try to play a record so bad. <laughs> oh. Casey's just running it around inside his teeth, hoping the sound comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Do we fight with the needle? No. <laughs> but what we learn here is that Casey has signed Luke up for the tryouts for the surf team that we talked about a few scenes ago yes but surf enemy also signed up will never matter will yep. not pay <laughs> off in the worst possible way i want seriously podcast listener take a second you've earned it right you made it through covid you're still alive or you're playing this for a dead person in which case weird hobby either way take a moment and be like what's the most disappointing most nothing result of these surf tryouts this movie will defeat them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay. So he goes home from the record store to tell his parents this awesome surfing plan that he came up with, right? <laughs> well, his plan is just like, so, uh, mom, dad, I was thinking I might surf. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Like he's asking his parents to do anal. Yes. With him. It's yeah. so fucking weird. Yeah. So just to be clear, his pizza parlor mentor is like, you got to come up with a compromise. And his compromise between going to college and surfing is how about I join a surf team? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. So, yeah. Well, and this is when they realize that, like, those two pursuits are not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. Right. He's like, my plan, mom and dad, is what if I went to college and surfed? And they're like, yeah, OK. Yeah, that's, that's fine. We didn't say that you had to stop the surfing part. <laughs> yep. The plot assassin strikes like this movie's plot had <laughs> yeah. fucking insulted Vladimir Putin. It's just like, oh, <laughs> you can do both. I genuinely thought he was going to look up from his food and be like, so what do you guys think the movie's about now? Because <laughs> now it's about nothing. You understand well, that the movie is about I was going to storm out. Now I can't really. You just said, yeah. So I don't even know. There's nothing. There's nothing. But then there was like, he, he adds this superfluous plot as though he realized that in real time. He's like, all right, okay, so you guys have already agreed to this. So here's the deal. If I don't make the surf team, I'll go to college wherever you want. But if I do make the surf team, I'll keep surfing for the rest of my life. And they're like, yeah, man, whatever. We just want you to go to fucking yeah. you know, college. We said yes before you made the surf team. All right. Already well played, yes. Dad. All right. If I don't make the surf team, I'll suck your fucking dick. <laughs> You want that, Daddy? Okay, son, I'm going to need you to stop making offers. <laughs> All right, so so sometime later, he's at work, and this is when love interest comes in. This is Emily. Oh, Mike. Okay, what? here's a little pop question for you. What terrible thing did these two human beings go through that their chemistry is so stale on stage? Oh. I'm guessing they were concentration camp guards together. That is their <laughs> <laughs> That's an awkward bump into later. Right. Yeah, yeah, right? That explains yeah. their acting abilities. Yeah. So yeah, so Emily comes in with her friend Jessica that they're they're there to pick up a pizza, but Luke has to flirt a bit first. Oh, Jessica's the fucking best. Isn't she, though? <laughs> She's fantastic. So, yeah, Emily and Luke are doing their bullshit eye contact. We used to be at a concentration camp as guards together. And Jessica's just like, 
dude, how much for the fucking pizza? I'm yes. so goddamn hungry. Let's <laughs> yes. go. I'm eating my pizza. She literally halfway through the love scene, she's like, I'm just going to take this to the table. There will not be pizza when you get there if you take long. <laughs> Oh God, he gets her, he gets her fucking order and she, he's like, uh, large pepperoni, extra cheese, right? And I'm like, oh my God, even the pizza orders in this movie are boring. <laughs> oh. Okay. And then he goes, I and, like that. Well, yeah, me too, but I know it's too boring to be a fucking movie. <laughs> so, and then he goes like, so, hey, are you ladies coming to the party tonight? Because that's where the next scene is. And they're like, oh, really? Okay. All right. So I guess we're going to. The party. So now we the go. party. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. See you at the party. Everything at the is place. so fucking high school generalized for the whole movie. Yes. They'll go to the point. They'll yep. have the party. Yeah. He's going to join the team. <laughs> All right. So now we cut over to the party. The goddamn garage band ass soundtrack continues. <laughs> oh. And we see we see one of these shitty actors extras being like, "This is a keg." Oh you, yeah! <laughs> you twist the keg knob. Yep, and then keg it. I hurt myself. <laughs> so, somebody's just standing on it. Yeah, it's like yeah, dude, <laughs> and then move on. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, and we see that Casey sure isn't having much luck with the ladies because he's overweight. Yep. Okay. Classic. But again, like this movie never full on does comedy with him, so it's not like he's like. And then I said anal fissure. He just like tries to talk to girls and then we see them walk away and he looks sad for a yeah, minute. Yeah, exactly. And everybody's <laughs> like, ha ha, fat Classic guy. shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Unloved and alone. So. All right. So, and then Emily and Jessica show up. So Luke goes to flirt with them. <laughs> and he's like, oh, look, it's the always walking together two girls. Let yep. me <laughs> go talk to them. And this is a very special version of of failing the Bechdel test. Right. <laughs> <laughs> These two women are with each other all the time, apparently never talking until they literally encounter a male character. Yep. But yeah. they're always together. Unreal. The Handmaid's Tale. And of course, this is where they like, you know, uh, he walks up to them and they're like, oh, is this some kind of alcohol having party? Yeah. Oh, Gross. and again, Jessica's my fucking hero. She's like, so this is what you call a party? Where's the fucking cake, asshole? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they, they flirt for 11 seconds, and then Emily's like, I gotta go, though. I can't be at a party with drink drinkers. Sorry, so. we only had 18 seconds to be at this party. This is... Yeah. We used them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Luke slinks back to Casey after Emily and Jessica leaves, and damn it if rival kid that Luke has still never met isn't right there talking shit. Out of nowhere. Yeah. They're talking, and he's just like, don't even bother, brah. She's a Jesus freak. And they're like, oh, you've entered our conversation. Hello. Me and Hello. My friend were talking. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, sorry. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm the surfing rival from earlier in the movie. Oh, yeah. you're a rival. Are yeah. you like the antagonist? Yeah. Now I realize that we haven't met. So yeah, so, <laughs> right. I came on strong. There's usually an established part where we don't <laughs> like each other. Well, so that's the fucked up thing, though, is that Matt never does anything mean or unkind or rivally. At this point, he's like, hey, man, yeah, no, I heard you surf and I also surf. So I would like to shake your hand. And Luke's like, yeah, fuck you. And I'm like, oh, right. well, he can't say fuck you. He says, hey, man, you're acting like a kook. You're <laughs> acting? It, it appears we have a conflict. <laughs> also, you, you, you just showed up in the conversation like a kook, he said. And the other yeah. guy's like, yeah, but but you said kook just yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like it. I'm allowed to do whatever I want from now on. That might be the most amazing lack of profanity in 301 episodes. <laughs> yeah. And th this leads to a challenge. And it was like, all right, well, let's have a surf contest. I'll take you on right now. Fucking land surfing. Go on oh. this pavement at this party. <laughs> I was so hoping it was going to flash cut to them just like staring at each other on boards doing nothing. <laughs> Shit, we should have done this in the ocean. Right, the oceans. Well, right, yeah. So like Matt's like, I'll out surf you anytime. And I'm like, surfing isn't like a race or tennis or something. Like, <laughs> how do you surf against one another right now? <laughs> well, you go to the point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's when they realize they're like, oh, right. No, land surfing would be nothing. Yeah. That's, that would just that's be standing stupid. still. That's stupid. Okay. Tomorrow 
at 8.30 at the point. So that's yep. what they're doing now. And that's the great thing is that they have to do that. They have to like sadly acknowledge that if you want to surf without running into a child on a beach vacation, you can only surf from like 8.30 to 9 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so they're right. like, all right, I'll see you. 6.45 tomorrow morning. The only time we're allowed on well, the that, beach. That's waves. It's a waves thing. That, that yeah, yeah. Early. Yeah. So, okay. So that night, Luke sneaks back into his house drunkenly through the sliding door. Oh, uh, <laughs> come on. Drunk sneaking into your house is fucking great. I miss it. Now that I'm an adult, I want to do it as a challenge. Right? Right? There was too many yeah. snakes now, but I feel like I'd be good at it now. I so wanted the fucking door to come off the runner. And he's sitting there trying to lift it. You can lift it and push it back. You know? <laughs> yeah, it just falls out of the frame and shatters. Shush, <laughs> 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 glass. But it wouldn't matter, though, because, of course, dad is standing right there watching him sneak in. Yeah, he says, my son is out there drinking and getting drunk. <laughs> yeah. How do you think this reflects on me? And I'm like, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Literally <laughs> does not. Dad just drops out of the ceiling and screams, I'm a cop. And yeah. he's like, I call you. <laughs> right. It was not like this for me. For me, it was like my dad also like stone drunk sneaking <laughs> at the same time. So. <laughs> So. The door is already shattered as Heath is sneaking in. <laughs> Dad's picking glass out of his arms. Yeah, so. right, right, exactly. Well, my dad was a fucking cop who was standing right there right as soon as she got into the door. So, yeah, this was a bit triggering for me. And I wasn't drunk because I was at Denny's with the drama club <laughs> yeah, until right. two in the morning. Yeah. But the point is, cop dad is like, Luke, you're grounded. And by the way, that would include any, I don't know, showdowns at the point you might have going that counts we're not we're not letting you do what? that and he's like oh, i have a showdown at the ah oh, you said yeah. exactly oh, god it. damn it mm. they also have the you know you wouldn't sneak out and get drunk if you love jesus enough discussion here yeah which is great because they have a fight within the movie about which of them isn't jesusy enough he's like you need to love jesus and it's like no no we just established your character needs to love jesus no i love jesus the second most your mother loves jesus the most we both need to learn to love jesus more. <laughs> all right so but i'll tell you what him being grounded is what we're gonna get in terms of cliffhanger moments in this movie so we're gonna take a break there but we'll be back in a minute with even more cut back Eli, Heath, get in here. Yeah, Noah, what's up? Amazing news. Oh, <gasps> Ray Comfort died. No, no, better. Kirk Cameron died. No, guys, nobody died. Ray oh. Comfort got mangled in farm Will equipment. You, would, Good you, one. would you stop? We got our very first spot from Audible. Get hey! out of here. What? Okay, usually one of you guys would say like, what's Audible? I mean, it's a podcast, Noah. Yeah, everyone knows what Audible is, don't. Don't be weird. That's a weird thing. For yeah, you so, but Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks ranging from bestsellers to new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more, like original entertainment from top celebrity creators and thousands of popular and binge-worthy podcasts. Hell yeah, they do. As an Audible member, you'll get one credit every month good for any title in their entire premium selection. That means the latest bestsellers, the buzziest new releases, the hottest celebrity memoir, or that bucket list title that you've been meaning to pick up. Those titles are yours to keep in your Audible library forever. You'll also get full access to our popular Plus catalog. It's filled with thousands and thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, guided fitness and meditation, sleep tracks for better rest, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of your favorite shows and exclusive series. All are included with your membership so you can download and stream all you want no credits needed wow so noah any recommendations on audible well with the movie ostensibly anyway coming out soon there's never been a better time to revisit the 1965 sci-fi classic dune and their multi-narrator audiobook production you'll find on audible is absolutely stellar how about you heath well i recently listened to a libertarian walks into a bear <laughs> it's the story of libertarianism causing bear maulings. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and new members can always try Audible for 30 days on us. Just visit audible.com slash awful or text awful to 500-500. So I can visit audible.com slash awful or just send a text that says awful to 500-500? That's right. Audible, your playlist for life. Wait, what's audible.com? Heath, the ad is over. I know, I just yeah, I get the point. That counts. Ah, it does. 37B. Hi, I'm Tony D. 
Are you a police officer in a television show or movie? Well, then come on down to Tony D's House of Movie Cops for all your movie cop needs. We've got cops just one week away from retirement. We got rookie cops looking to make a difference. And of course, we got crooked cops who turn on everybody in Act 3 for no apparent reason. Sorry, Tony. It was me all along. God damn it, not now, Chris. Right, right, sorry, sorry. Getting a cop for your Christian movie? We've got overwork cops, busy cops, and cops who should really focus less on being a cop and more on going to church with their family. I said I need to solve this murder. But today's the bake-off. But that's not all. Order two cops this weekend for a big Mayday sale, and you'll get a free badge and gun, perfect for turning in when the case goes too far. Or not far enough. Whatever, it's a gesture. Don't need these house of movie cops. You're out of line. Hey, everybody, it's me, Call the Pug of Pegacorn. And me, Inside Out Little Girl. And I'm Heath Enright. Just, just me. So, guys, this is the final episode of God Awful Movies during Matreon. Any last minute ideas on how to get everyone's money? Have you tried a song? Yep, yep, we did that one in the first episode. So, uh, what about okay. a guilt trip? You know, a pug needs garlic bread. Yeah, yeah, we told people they were stealing money from Eli's baby in the song, so I think we kind of covered that. Well, what about the pajama party? Oh, hey, hey, Melania Trump. What about the pajama party? Well, once a year, we get the cast together, not for a live show, not for work, but just to hang out, play games, and eat good food. That's right, and all the patrons of all our shows are invited to watch along online. I'm Tony D now, by the way. I didn't reuse the character. That's right. Sarah Huckabee Sanders? That's right, Buttercup. We'll be answering questions and playing games on the evening of August 7th. But that's not all. If we get enough new and upgrading patrons, you can make us do stuff like vegan snack taste testing, a live performance by Anna, or changing the name of Eli's baby to Heath Enroy. That's right, you can. So if you want to give us money, head over to Matreon.com. That's M-A-Y-T-R-E-O-N dot com to see our goals and give what you can. Did you guys try blackmail? Ooh, we didn't. Uh, give us your money or we'll kill Inside Out Little Girl. Okay, too far. I liked it. Two votes. Two votes. <laughs> Selection was stolen from me. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to open up on Luke waking up the next morning. He's grounded, but he's going to sneak off to surf despite his groundedness. Well, he kind of had to. I mean, the bassoon started playing. So he was like, All <laughs> yeah, right. so like that would be weird You're like, if I didn't I sneak, sneak out, somewhere. Right? Now. <laughs> Turns to the bassoon player. I'm sneaking out. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're sneaking out. Yeah. <laughs> he sneaks out. He almost gets hit by a car. His dad wakes up. He's like, honey, did you hear our son? foreshadowing yeah <laughs> right, foreshadowing. right exactly <laughs> so he gets to the beach and we watch a little neck down surfing for a bit <laughs> yeah this yeah. is a surf off i have no idea what is happening okay yeah <laughs> so first of all i didn't even count this as one of the surf montages i'm gonna i'm gonna be counting them from now on okay. i didn't even count this one we've had we've had one so far so unimpressive yeah yeah but the <laughs> This is the meat at the point for the big surf off. I don't know. Like, right. They're just like, I surfed you. No, I surfed you. Surfed you're, you no, surfed you're now. Miss, your surf missed. I have bracelets on that, but your surf bounces off of my bracelets. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, but, and then the reason you didn't count the fucking montage is because the montage is like, yeah, we're loving Jesus. Well, we sir. Oh, oh, dad's here. Dad's here. Never mind. We are not loving Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dad shows up and cuts the fucking montage short. <laughs> That's how we know who wins the surf off. It's whoever's dad shows up first loses the surf. <laughs> yeah, they right. lose the surf. Oh, oh right. You just, you. whoever surfs the long Longest wins, I which means I'm guaranteed to win any surf offs I'm ever in, unless you're surfing against Heath. Yeah, right. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Dad found him though, because this is the one place for surfing. Right. In well, it's San Diego the area. point. I mean, obviously, yeah. you would go to the point. It's not a point. No, right. It's, it's, it's the, the point. point. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So they go home. So the dad can be an asshole more. This is when I realized that mom's primary function outside of Bible reading in this movie would be condescending a size. <laughs> right? Like no matter what dad says or what the son says, she sighs condescendingly like, I would have done so much better. And it's like, well, why don't you fucking yell at the kid then? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Dad's being all mad and he's doing that thing where he's like, your son is a piece of shit who was grounded and snuck out because of a bassoon. And she's <laughs> like, well, God 
gave him the gift of surfing. Yeah. <laughs> and then dad's like, okay, you say dumb shit like that all the time. I want to divorce. I would like to divorce you now. Yeah. Mostly because of the dumb shit like that that you say. That was a weird twist at the end of the scene. He was like, honey, you know, I feel like we really aren't uh, on the same page when it comes to our sons. So end our marriage and divide our shit in half. What do you think? End our marriage? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, yeah, he's like, I'm sick and tired of the, all this bullshit conflict that you and I clearly have. I'm going to go to work. And she's like, but it's Saturday. There's no work for you today. You're off. And he's like, well, somebody's got to make the money. And she's like, yeah, but how is that related? Um, what are you gonna? <laughs> you gonna fight crime for tips in the town yeah, square right. like a juggler? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I am volunteering for the police today. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a, a mid shift. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. So then Matt, the new kid, the the surf rival, he calls an audible and he decides that he's just gonna be friend number two instead of rival. Yeah. He literally walks up to him at school and he's like, "Hey, uh, it seems like maybe the conflict is your parents." marriage now so we might as well I, just hang out <laughs> yeah, <I guess> so. <laughs> we're not really enemies so much as we're in minor competition over a spot on a surfing team huh and he's like oh yeah yeah okay cool. yeah yeah exactly i don't know are you still the antagonist i were you even before all right you're yeah. gone you're gone all right so then we, we head back to the house where we get to meet ridiculously hot youth pastor who <laughs> the fuck is this? Okay. Yes. He's never been in any other movie. This is no, it. This, this is insane. Because we don't know right away that he's the youth pastor. So I was just like, okay, mom's introducing the son to her sex robot. <laughs> the fuck is this? He is impossibly good looking. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. <laughs> if handsome Squidward were a surf instructor, it's this man. <laughs> Well, everyone in this movie is way too attractive for this movie, right? But like this guy, it's just, it, yeah, it's it's silly that no one ever like mentions how hot he is at least. So, yeah. But he's the youth pastor and he's there for like a Jesus intervention with Luke. Okay, that makes a lot more sense because the way they play this scene, it's like someone was afraid to write full on dialogue for this movie. Because the way they play the scene is like, hey, Luke, I thought you might like to come down to church sometime. And he's like, Psh, maybe. And his dad is like, Luke, seriously, I'll fucking stab you in the heart. <laughs> okay. It's, he doesn't quite say that, but it's really fucking close. Yeah. So Luke's arguing back against going to the church, whatever, with the, the youth pastor. Dad's like, no, I will physically abuse this child until he goes to church. Don't worry, pastor. Yeah. And then the, the pastor nods affirmative yep. and the scene ends. Yep. yep. Wouldn't want to spoil the child there. Would you like to use my rod? <laughs> and then, okay, so so he goes up to his room and, and then we get Luke and Emily meeting with this another entirely uninspired. Hey, look, we're both walking towards one another in this nondescript location moment. Right. Hey, oh. sorry, sorry we left that party after like 18 seconds. That was like a really weird thing to do. <laughs> so, Let's talk some more now. Yeah. If I'm in any location for more than one minute, I explode like the bus from speed. Oh, so. all right. Now it all makes sense. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, she's like, well, you know, I disapprove of alcohol, so I had to leave the party. And I'm like, yeah, but you're a fucking high school kid regurgitating dumb shit someone else said and have no life experience from which to draw. So it's literally impossible to give a shit what you think because you don't think. <laughs> yeah. Luke instead hears her say like, okay, stop drinking. Gross. And he's like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So cool. you go like a church or... Like a that sounds guy. fun. I bet you and your friends do a series of activities that are all your idea, huh? <laughs> yeah? You have a lot of original thoughts. Yes. Listen to a lot of original music. Really on the cutting edge of culture. <laughs> so, yeah, and this scene is so fucking stupid because he's like, yeah, I have to go to youth group now. My parents are making me. And she's like, well, I go to youth group because I love Jesus so much. He's like, oh, we're going to meet up at church youth group later. And she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, then this scene is entirely superfluous, right? Yeah. Wouldn't we just have the scene where we meet up there? We already went over yeah. that you didn't like me at the party. There's really no reason for this scene to exist at all. Nope. Jesus Christ. And and then, oh, and then we have that super important exchange where Luke asks mom about her relationship with dad. 
<laughs> Why the fuck would we care about this? Uh, Mom, I couldn't help but overhear that scene from before where Dad was like, by the way, want a divorce. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great, though. He's like, so are, are you and Dad happy? Also, before you go ahead and lie, no, you're not. I no, heard you yeah, are not. Right. You're yeah. not. Right. And she's like, son, sometimes life is, is all about doing shit that you absolutely fucking hate with every fiber of your being every day until you die. <laughs> She's, she says, we both love you. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, okay, so not each oh, other. Great. Yikes. You, you like spending time with one another? No, not even. Yeah. Not <laughs> and she's even. like, no. we're seen. Nope. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> so, we're cut. Stop saying cut, yeah. mom. <laughs> All right. So, and then we head off to fucking, to Shane's youth group. And he manages an opening even lazier than the, the Oxford English Dictionary defines acts as. He starts off by saying, so how would you guys define integrity? <laughs> okay. I couldn't even yep. be bothered to look in the OED, apparently. Here's the great thing, though, right? All of these actors are doing like, youth group is fun, and our pastor is sweeping us away with his question that is boring to be had with a child. But if you watch it, as I did, as everyone is so fucking horny for this pastor, yes. that he's allowed to say whatever the fuck he wants. Yes. It's a pretty great scene. Yeah, well, that's exactly how it plays, because once again, nobody ever addresses the fact that he's so stupid fucking hot. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, you know, he, there's a, Ab, he calls on Abby. She nails the definition of integrity, by the way. Yeah. Brett, he fucking shuts down Brett. This is Brett's one line. He's like, uh, she's like, ah, caring about your family. And he's like, what about uh, going on porn websites? And he goes, Yeah. Moving on. And I was just like, yikes. <laughs> oh, poor little Brett. That's where he goes immediately in the open classroom environment. What's a great example of integrity? When I want to jerk off to porn, but I don't. Sorry, did I say that out loud? Oh, shit. <laughs> Brett, that is your answer to every fucking question I asked this meeting. <laughs> and we're all a little sick of it. <laughs> I can see your erection through your shorts, Brett. It's just super <laughs> obvious, man. <laughs> Why would tucking it into your waistband make it less obvious, man? <laughs> so then, okay, you're all tucking right now. Am I? <laughs> all right, so then we check back in and mom and dad at home. Mom is reading the Bible again. This time, I shit you not, you can watch the movie if you don't believe me. It's free on Amazon. Her lips are literally moving as she reads. <laughs> yeah, if you held her lips in place... She would become illiterate. Yeah. 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 So, and better than that, she's not actually reading. So her lips, if you watch them, are going, ba la la la. Yeah, ba, right, ba, right. Ba, ba, mumble, mumble, mumble. Too much la. Too much la. Yeah, so mom and dad are fighting. She's like, you work too much. I bet you're going to have to work during our marital counseling session, too. I'm like, wow, that's a lazy transition. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're going to be working during the next scene. And maybe for, sorry, one second, look at my script. Four and a half scenes from now. Yeah, yeah maybe right. you'll be working. <laughs> I also, I want to point out that mom has a variety of different crucifix necklaces. At this point, I started counting them. She has a different one for every scene. It's, I think this movie doubles as like a commercial for her Etsy shop or something. Well, yeah, she also has a number of different Bibles. We will see her reading from multiple Bibles as this story goes on. <laughs> So, yeah, so they have that, kind of, but we learn that they're going to marital counseling. Don't worry, it's not real counseling, it's church counseling. So then youth group is wrapped up. Luke is getting a ride home from Pastor Shane, right? So the two of them have to chat it up a little bit to close this scene out. Oh, I was so close to a gay porn here, and I would have watched it. That would have been an excellent gay porn. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Pastor Shane's like, hey, Luke, um, will you grab those Bibles for me over there? Uh, in like a circular motion, like wax. <laughs> <laughs> Grab this rosary bead from my yeah, palm. Right, right. Like, so stupid. And then, of course, we learned that uh, Pastor Shane might know something about surfing. About how okay. hard it is to be a professional surfer. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I don't want to spoil this movie, but this conversation in the context of what we learn later is ridiculous. Right. Right. Sure is. So we're going to find out later in the movie that Pastor Shane was a pro surfer. Right. So in this conversation, he's like, so what do you want to do, Luke? You want to be a professional surfer? And Luke's like, yeah. And he's like, cool. Anyways, let me give you a ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
he's like, you know, it's really hard being a pro surfer. It's um really easy to fail and, you know, become a Christian actor in one movie ever. <laughs> ever, yeah, Something exactly. Something like that. <laughs> Luke's like, what do you know about surfing? And he's like, come on, I'm I'm very clearly a failed it's pro surfer. Yeah, Just don't make me yeah, sad. Come on. That's my job. <laughs> so, yeah, and he's like, hey, man, you know, we have a church surfing group that you could come to. You could surf with me and people like me. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> you have an Ed Hardy shirt by any chance? <laughs> I just love that there's a Christian version of everything. Yeah. Like, it's just, there's just this beautiful, dark, alternate universe. And it happens in all the Christian movies, but it also happens in the real world. Like, I love that the universe is full of landmines that you're like, oh, there is actually a, a board game meetup near me in New Jersey. Oh, God damn it. It's Christian. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. They have their own fucking WWE. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> you show up for a surf club. You start pouring milk over your board. Everybody's like, oh, we are. No, 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 no. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's a Jesus one. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, okay. So then we, we get the scene where like mom debriefs him about how, how youth group was. I was just like, God, Ooh. Jesus, the progression of this movie is so fucking tedious. They have a scene, then they have two characters talk about that scene. Honestly, if the next scene had been dad talking to him about his conversation about with mom about youth group, right. I wouldn't have been surprised. Jesus. At one point, so the mom's supposed to be a real estate agent. At one point, she goes, I finally got an offer on that Johnson's old house. I'm like, really? We're not going to retake that with all those words in the correct order? We're just going <laughs> to plow forward regardless? Okay. <laughs> one take. Every time they shot this movie, they were missing sweet, sweet wave crush. So one take. Apparently, yeah. Shot. Uh -huh. Yeah, but mom is very proud of Luke for doing the thing that they made him do. Yeah. And she talks about how much she hates her marriage a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you know, life isn't about doing what we like. It's it's about being married to your father. <laughs> well, yeah, she says life isn't always about doing what we want. And he's like, kind of like you staying married to dad. <laughs> She's like, wow. I'll propose. <laughs> yeah, I'll exactly. Propose. <laughs> that that cut a little deep. too close. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then she says, eh, you know, the things we don't like to do. It's all just a season in our lives. And I was like, wow, that's rough. Your marriage. It's. It's just 30 years of winter. It's yeah. no big <laughs> fuck, get divorces, people. If yeah, it's not right. working, get divorced. Yeah, for fuck's sake. Especially, yeah, your kid's 18. Jesus Christ, what are you waiting on? Go have some fun. Fuck some people or something. All right. And then we get to watch this couple go to counseling, and that's fun. Okay. But this counselor... He is so fucking psyched that anyone is here. Yeah. Like, I want the movie where we watch this character and no one ever shows up. Because obviously this is the first couple to ever show up to his couple's counseling Sunday. Oh, yeah, no, no. He he says, he's like, well, I'm really surprised to see that the husband is here. It's usually just the wife that shows up. Like, really? <laughs> well, <laughs> then what then are you doing? it's not counseling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's can you couples counseling without the other person present? Uh, no. <laughs> they, I think they do some of that on purpose, but the other one shows up for the next one. Like, well, right, yeah, sure. Go to sure. something, <laughs> yeah. But then they they sit down for counseling, and and she uh, aggressively, sarcastically sighs about something he says, and he's like, "See, pastor, there's the problem. My wife's a bitch. That's the problem <laughs> right there. Can you cure that? Yeah. Your book." And the pastor is like, "Okay, but you guys are both here, right?" That's pretty cool. You showed up here, yeah. me, you guys. And then, he, and, then, and then he says, the Bible, it has so many amazing marriage tips. And I was like, wow, you sure you want to get into that? Yeah, right. Really, movie? Right. Yeah. You're going to get into the marriage tips about the, the, the Bible, what the Bible says about men and women in relationships. I'm like, really? almost all of that shit's illegal, dude. Yeah. He says the Bible, quote, the Bible is full of things you can build your life upon. I was like, for instance, did you know rabbits can chew their own cud? Right, <laughs> right. He said he specifically says there are concrete things the Bible tells you that you can do. And the example he gives is the quote from Joshua where, where Joshua says, this is the entire quote. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's one of the concrete things that you can do in your relationship. <laughs> yeah. 
Also, just pointing this out, at that point in Joshua, Joshua is standing there with a sword being like, well, I'm going to keep being Jewish and I'm going to murder everyone who doesn't. (laughs) Well, right. And also, I want to point out the circular nature of this argument. He's like, well, you know, if you follow the Bible, it'll tell you all kind of important things to do. And he's like, like what? Like, follow the fucking Bible. (laughs) And that's the end of their counseling session. They have four minute counseling (laughs) session. Rule number two. First rule number one. There you go. Yeah, fucking the the priest says, well, the problem is you're insufficiently Christian. Oh, that's time. That's it. And then we get a, yet another sloppy ass, well, hello there scene where Emily happens upon Luke and Casey. <laughs> this is the scene that's only worth mentioning because through the entire scene, Casey will be trying to show us the half eaten chips in his mouth because this movie's idea of comic relief measures exactly that of a four year olds. Right. And again, the thing that's great about this is that the movie doesn't know how to play comedy. So it's like, yeah, I guess I'll see you later at the party. And Casey's like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I'm bad at chips. <laughs> Honestly, you're bad at chips. Is that what you said? <laughs> you're bad at them. Honestly, if this movie had gone just a little bit further, like in every scene, Casey gets worse and his severe brain damage becomes more and more obvious. Yeah, right. That would have made the lesson of the movie make way more sense. Yeah, like, yeah. honestly, yeah. And then, and then Luke gets mad at him. So uh, Emily goes away and he's like, dude, what the fuck? You're making us look at like idiots with the chips. And he's like, I have a big handful. It was not my fault. I had a big handful of ones. I'm not good at chips. <laughs> yeah, but before she wanders off, Emily invites them to go to Boomers, which is an arcade, I guess, uh, with the youth group on Saturday. And she sort of afterthought invites Casey as well. But Luke is like, hey, man, if you want to go to the arcade, you have to go to youth group with me. And I'm like, I feel like he can go to the arcade whenever the fuck he wants to, man. Oh, just yeah, don't, I don't you're the one you're, who has to fucking go to youth Not group. your goddamn arcade. <laughs> but I love it because Casey's just like, I don't care. I'll go wherever you go. I'm a very desperately lonely character. In fact, every time we stop and ask me about something, the only thing I mention is that my stepfather hates me. So yeah, yeah I'll, no, that's go, true. <laughs> I'll join your religion. My parents are Baptist or whatever, but I'm, I'm your religion now. Whatever you say, Luke, I love you. Teach me to eat chips. Can you burp me, please? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the most useless scene in a movie filled with useless scenes. This is the one where mom comes in uh, to tell Luke that he's off restriction now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the mother-son porn we've all been waiting for. Well, she absolutely comes in the room like she's about to seduce him. Yep. And he was clearly watching porn at that exact... He's like, I wasn't watching porn of you. I was- we're, <laughs> we're different ages. You're not younger than me. There's a, <laughs> there's a different reason why I was laying in my bed with my covers pulled up to my chest on my laptop and you could only see one of my hands. Different, entirely different reason. I like to be cozy when I study. Yeah. <laughs> And that's that whole scene. That was that's that whole scene. Important. Mom says, "Finish up and get some sleep." At the end. <laughs> 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 like, oh. She understood what was happening. Yeah, okay. Mom gets it. So okay. So then we get yet another goddamn surfing montage, and it's again, it's like like surfing is kind of boring to look at when it's good, and this isn't good. So it's more of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm counting. I'm counting this as number two and number three. First, I was like, okay, surf montage number two. And then it lasted for way too long. I was yeah. like, that's number three. I forgot yeah, to count the one from before where they surfed each other hard. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It's three. That's fair. Yeah, this is one and a half. The other one was a half one. Yeah, right. So, and now we, we, we had, we come out of that montage. We're back at church youth group. Oh God, this is so stupid. This is so good. <laughs> it starts off with Shane saying, so how many of you have ever done something that you may regret? I'm like, Wow. Like, dude, they're doing something they're going to regret right now. <laughs> <laughs> One kid doesn't raise his hand. Nope. I've nailed it this entire time. <laughs> Don't blow this for me. Have you? Have you? You're talking to me. You're rapping with me right now. <laughs> but then his next question is, okay, hands down, who wishes they could undo those regrets? Um, and everybody's like, that's okay, man. That's literally the definition of a regret. That's what, it, that's okay, what the word back means. Up. No, everybody does not raise their no, hand. Uh, some, <laughs> a few kids are like, I mean, I killed that man, but it made me who I am today. You oh, yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then he's like, uh, he picks up a banana and we all got excited, right? Like he picks up oh. a banana and he's like, let me make a banana related analogy. And we're just salivating. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. But it, I... Okay, I can't say it's dumber than the Ray Comfort thing because, you know, he's the 
fucking Wyatt Earp of dumb yeah, things. Right, you're right, you're you're right, see yeah, untouchable. Exactly. But he gives it to Casey and he's like, Casey, open the banana. And he did that thing where you poke a pin into a banana and you schmoozle it around so that when someone opens it, it's cut into pieces. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he's like, our lives without Christ is like a pre-cut banana. And everyone's like, what? I mean, you're hot, man. So I'll pretend that you said something, but that's nothing. That's right. nothing. I need you to know that was nothing. <laughs> well, my favorite aspect of this, by the way, is that they were too lazy to cut because you're supposed to do little slices, right? You open it up and the banana is sliced. All they did was cut it into like three chunks because <laughs> fuck this movie. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is really hard. You got to wiggle it around a lot. <laughs> and that was the best they had. So it dissolves into a preaching montage. Yes, right. Yeah, exactly. Where we can't hear it. It's just the crappy music again instead. Yeah. Whatever they had after that was worse than pre-cut banana. Wow. Wow. That's terrifying to think about. But the important thing is that Casey is sure liking this Jesus stuff. <laughs> And then I guess they've, they've listened to enough of that crap to get their tokens. So we head over to Boomers and we have a little like having fun at the arcade montage. W with a serving montage in there, too. There is. Four. Actually, there was. Four, was yeah. <laughs> there was. Yeah. yeah, right. Apparently, according to this movie's timeline, they got done with the youth thing. They're like, OK, let's go surfing real quick and then let's come back to where we already are and play in the arcade. <laughs> let's, let's all watch some surfing videos that are really bad for like. 30 seconds. Yeah, right. And yeah. then we'll go to the arcade. There's go-karts at this arcade. Mm -hmm. And I I got bored because this movie's boring. And I was like, God, I would be terrified to do go-karts with Ethan Noah. <laughs> the, the crash would be inevitable and deadly. <laughs> yeah, somebody. I, mean, I don't think it, they know he would die. But I, think, I don't think injuries. it would involve me or Noah crashing. <laughs> so, oh, so there's a great moment where um, Emily and Luke are play in DDR and Emily clearly goes for the double high five but Luke doesn't notice and they leave it in the movie not only do they leave it in the fucking movie but they do it in slow motion in the movie mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> a slow motion missed high yep. five. a slow motion whiff no second yeah. takes <laughs> Oh, it's so a, great. A spurned high five in high def slow mo. They yep. it. It's amazing. Oh. And okay, so this all wraps up and Emily and Jessica, they're heading over to get pizza. The youth group's heading over to get pizza and they invite Casey and Luke along, right? Yep. So Luke and Casey are driving over. Uh, uh, Casey just got his driver's license today. So they're having like a mano and mano discussion about the importance of love interests in Jesus. <laughs> hey, Casey, apropos of nothing that's going to matter in literally seconds. Would you say that you've accepted Christ into your life and that he's your Lord and Savior? Oh, good question. <laughs> good question. So you know how I was telling you my mom's boyfriend kind of sucks and that's why I'm an atheist. Remember when I said that? Yeah, yeah I do yeah. remember that, Casey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know what? I think I think I'm pretty serious about Jesus now. I think, yeah. you know, everything in my life is going really well. I'm super happy about everything. Everything's going fantastic. Nothing's going to go wrong in my life. I can't imagine. Nobody would jump in right now and I interject with like some sort of thing. Truck smash. There it is. <laughs> She's. I laughed so fucking hard. I laughed trip. really because, hard. So they did that thing. I don't remember what movie did it first, but ever since then, every goddamn car accident is this, like where the one character's looking at the other and you see the truck coming in his window, right? But it makes no sense in this instance because they're parked. So he would have to be parked sideways on a turnpike <laughs> for a semi to be coming that fast directly out of this. This is not how accidents work. Or, or oh. a semi was trying to drift into the parking lot of a David Buster. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when we make God Awful Movies the movie, one of two things has to happen. Someone has to have that conversation while expecting to get hit by a truck and then not. <laughs> or... We defeat the villain by having him sit in a car and say about how happy he is. <laughs> <laughs> and a truck just hits him from nowhere. I like that one. All right, Christian so movie. Works every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they have this terrible car accident. So we cut to the hospital where dad looks mildly inconvenienced about all of it. Okay. <laughs> Whatever direction this dad got with the talk to the doctor, we ended on casual chat. <laughs> yes. Well, they clearly tried to do some amount of like doctor talking and it went terribly. So they were just like, cut all the audio. This is nothing. Right. This is nothing. Right. So he wanders into the hospital room where mom is reading from a different Bible now. <laughs> yeah. Her travel Bible. Yeah, he, exactly. <laughs> I like how he like resolves their marriage 
plot thread yep. real quick. He's like, honey, I think this is what the movie's about now. So uh, I'm sorry. And our marriage is fine. Yeah, right. I promise that our marriage is fixed now. And she's like, oh, great. So so he wakes up. Luke wakes up. And uh, they're like, good news. You're doing great. You're going to be fine. And he's like, wow, that's awesome. How's, how's Casey? And they're like, why don't you go back to bed? He's like, no, 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 no. Just, you know, tell me how he's doing. It's weird that you, I feel like you're dodging. How is Relax. Casey doing? You're very Crazy. sleepy. No, no. You guys, please, please tell me about my friend Casey. You've been right watching you Mayor soda? of East Town? Um. <laughs> you want a soda, buddy? I'm thinking about buying a yacht. What? <laughs> I wanted that to keep going for nice. so much longer. <laughs> Who's this? It's the puppet pal. <laughs> no, go back to sleep. Oh, God. Yeah. And, he's, and finally, they're like, he didn't make it, son. And Luke is like, what are you talking about? Where is he? I'm like, does he not know about adding or death? I mean, what, what the <laughs> hell? Where is he from? Yeah. He's like, liar. And I wanted dad to be like, yeah, weird prank. He's in the bathroom. Casey yeah. comes out. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no, he isn't dead. You're lying to me. That's such a weird line. But I'm pretty sure it's there because somebody told these writers that denial was the first stage of grief. And that's what they thought they meant. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. Uh uh-uh, uh, is it? No. Is not. No. Because I have bracelets on and his death belt goes <laughs> off of them. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I feel like we finally have a sense of what they think this movie's about, at least. And uh, that earns us another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Luke win at the surf tryout thing? Will Emily find a personality trait in time? Is there a more annoying potential category than evangelist surfer? Find out the answers to these questions and more. We'll be returned for the almost entirely random conclusion of Cutback. And then when he reaches down for the bill, yoink. Yeah, yeah, we'll show him a trap. Exactly. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Eli. Heath and I are tired of all the small print and catches and the contracts over at Big Wireless, so we called one of the reps over to collect the bill, and when he does... Yoink. Yoink, exactly. I, I had said yoink earlier, but that was me first, by the way. Noah stole my yoink, but yes. Guys, guys, yoinked if you're yoink. tired of lousy cell phone bills, why don't you just try Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. $15 a month? There's got to be a catch to that. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings direct to you. I switched to Mint Mobile when they started sponsoring our show, and I get the same great service as my old provider, but I save literally hundreds of dollars a month. You do? I sure do. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your exact same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Okay, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right, Eli, we're sold. I guess this means we should uh, cut down the guy who checks the meter, too, huh? No. We leave him up for a while. Tell me to get smart bulbs. Right? You get smart bulbs. Get you smart do bulbs. You do it. Your job. Should You should have smart. You guys have smart bulbs. Too. I'm going to put you up there with him. Hey, guys. I'm Pastor Mikey. Um, but you can just call me Mikey. Let me, uh, let me just turn this chair around and, like, have a seat, you know, just like you guys. But none of us are sitting like that. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. You guys can, though, if you want. Mm. We're just rapping here, you know, just rapping with Pastor Mikey. Um, do you mean like actually rapping? No, no, I mean like chatting, like we're talk, we're talking. No, no, you're talking. That's just you. OK. All right. You know what? So uh, who can tell me what sin is? Um, It's bad stuff. Bad stuff. Totes, 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 yeah. totes. What mm. kind of bad stuff, though, guys? Uh, okay. Like, for example, lying to your mom and dad. Totally. Yes. Great example. Uh, e- eating too many chips. No, Nick, not that. That's oh. a bad answer. And I'm grateful the fires of hell will cleanse your consciousness from existence. Uh, okay. I-, I have another one. Staying out late. Exactly. Those are great examples, guys. We're really rapping here now. 
Did anyone have a question? Uh, you're wearing short shorts, and I can see your testicles because of the way you're sitting. Not a question, but thank you, Michelle. Are these supposed to look like that? No, they are not. I had a wood shop accident. Gross. You're gross, Nick. Your soul is gross. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for yet more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our hero at the cemetery, having himself a mope. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, this is right after the funeral, but they couldn't like get a group of people together in black suits on their budget. So we just have to like figure that out in retrospect. Oh, that's definitely what happened. <laughs> Good point. So all we get is Luke just sad by a tree. And Emily walks up and she's like, hey, did you walk away to stand by the tree? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My my parents are right there waiting. They're just like, <laughs> let yeah, me right, finish right, my exactly. tree mope. They're waiting for my tree mope to be done. <laughs> yeah. She says, I don't think I'll ever get used to this place. The the graveyard? Right. Why? Why would she get used it to doesn't, it? <laughs> no matter how many people I kill. Yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, <laughs> Luke's aunt, uh, line here is so dumb. He's like, Casey it n never got to surf. It's like, dude, he was terrified of the, well, a hundred more years. He wouldn't have had a chance to surf. He was terrified of that shit. Why didn't you do something that he liked for a change? <laughs> I never forced him to do the thing he didn't want to do. And I'll always regret that. Yeah. <laughs> this is also where Emily gives us like the evil moment of the movie. Oh, yeah. Where she's mm -hmm. like, dude, fucking calm down. It's it's cool. This is God's plan. You're being a baby about it. Yep. And Luke's like. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Just, uh, just want to be clear what you just said. You're saying God gave Casey a driver's license for one day and then killed him with a truck as a, a prank plan? That's, that's, that's his plan. Yes. And yes. Yep. And yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I wrote my notes. I'm like, wow, Christianity is some callous shit when you Say the tenets of the religion out loud. <laughs> yeah. God knows what's best for us. And he's like, Casey dying is what's best for us. Yep. Sure yes. Is. yes. And keep in mind, like Emily is just having this conversation. She's like, you know, I know eventually you're going to be tempted to think that like your friend dying was a bad thing. But I want to explain ahead of time. Like, it's not like she's answering some you know, theological question that he asked her. She's just coming up and going like, all right, I just want to make sure you're not going to be a dick about this. Yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> want you to take your friend's death the wrong way. The day of his funeral. For the hour of his, they're at the fucking funeral. <laughs> yep. Literally at the funeral. And he gets mad at her for this, reasonably. Yeah. And her response is, you think you're the only person who knows someone who died? Which is unrelated. Right. right? It doesn't what? make it a better plan because her dad also died. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> this is where she's like, well, my dad died. Go fuck yourself. And he's like, okay, that's not, that's not how the dead dad card works. Everybody knows that's <laughs> how you play that card. Fucking idiot. Also, that if anything, that makes it a worse plan. Right. Well, but she's like, but, you know, after my dad died, I was real sad. But eventually I realized that he only killed my dad so that I would move here and meet you. <laughs> yeah. Meet you. They, they went to D&B once. That's yeah. <laughs> right. They haven't met. They're not married. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I feel like that would be an awkward convo with dad and God. Where? Where am I? What is this? Hello there, Steve. Oh, God? Are you God? Am I dead? I'm afraid so, Steve, but fear not. It was all part of my divine plan. Oh, it was? Yes. Because of your death, Steve, Luke will finally surf. Surf? Okay, but sorry, who's Luke? Oh, right, you didn't meet him. Uh, he's yeah. your daughter's church group boyfriend. And, and he's gonna surf? Yeah, like professionally. So, you know, had to... Sorry, no, 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 no sorry. Um, so, in order for Luke, who I've never met, to surf, you needed me to fall into that lion cage at the zoo and die. Well, I... Uh... I mean, no, I didn't have to have you fall into the lion cage. Right, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You could have, like, I don't know, given him the confidence to surf on his own totally. without killing me. Yep, could have done that. Yes. But, but... 
the lion thing is pretty funny, you gotta admit. Okay, no, it was. It was funny, yeah. When they bit you on the ass? <laughs> right in the ass, yeah. They did bite me in the ass. Why would That's they true. start there? Right? First thing, you'd, you'd figure like, you know, arm, leg, right? Neck. Face. Ass. And then, to finish this thing, she says, you know, I opened the Bible and the first thing I read was Proverbs 3, 5, which for those of you who don't remember is, t- try not to think about it too much. Yep. The Bible yeah. hurts. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and the scene ends with Luke being like, all right, feels like there's a lot of pressure now to be worth your dead dad. Right. I go. Jesus I'm going to take off. You're crazy. We didn't even oh. heavy pet yet. I feel yeah. like this is a lot. <laughs> Can we get you out of the movie like the antagonist? You're the antagonist now, but I, I want you out too now. Yeah. A- apropos of nothing, what do you think the bases are? Do you, are you working with the, the good ones? <laughs> All right. So, and then we, we cut to Luke at work. This is so fucking stupid. He's at work the day his friend died. His boss comes up. He's like, hey, man, did you? Did you go to like your friend's funeral earlier today? He's like, yeah, I had to change out of my suit in the uh, bathroom. He's like, yeah, you can have the day off, man. No, I need this job. Well, yeah. Hello, welcome to Franco's Pizza. <laughs> 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 the boss doesn't even say you can have the day off. The boss is like, you're on leave now. And looks yeah. like, no, I need the money, though. And he's like, nope. Well, right. You're on leave. Right. Like, th- <laughs> how American is this? Keep in mind, the boss isn't offering to pay him for this time off. The favor is just not making him work the evening of his best friend's funeral. <laughs> oh, see, I really wanted him to make him work. He's like, and also, we need you to be in the big mouse costume today. <laughs> hey, kids. Who wants some t- 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 Okay. I'm Casey the Kumquat. Oh, God. I forgot the character's name is Casey. Just a bunch of selfies with a weeping mouse. <laughs> Honestly, if Chuck E. Cheese wants to win back my business after learning they can get me, find me a morning employee. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. All right. So then we, we head to school where Matt's uh, going to come up to him and go like, so I can't help but notice that you are down one best friend. Ooh, uh, too soon. Too soon. Okay, no, no. I, soon. It's all right. So we're still, are we still rivals? Um, still rivals. And then he has a, a moping montage, a beach yep. moping montage. Yeah, he sadly looks at the ocean while holding a surfboard. Yeah, yeah. this is actually impressive. It's a not surfing montage. There's a montage <laughs> of the is. main character it not is. surfing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm counting that as number five. Oh, well, sure, sure. He yeah. has like a memory slash vision of Casey. I just wrote in my notes, do you guys promise to stand on a beach imagining me doing stuff I never did when I die? You have to, okay? Oh, better than that, Eli, we're going to CGI you in there playing with a baby, and then we're going to stand there and talk about how much we love and miss you. Yeah, even better, even yeah. better. <laughs> So yeah, so he he looks at Ghost Casey for a while, has this amazing like flashback to all the different scenes that him and Casey were in, and I'm just like, you know, you guys could have filmed scenes specifically for this. You knew this was coming. (laughs) It was really sad. Like they had a really hard time making a montage about one of their main characters who (laughs) just died. They included the chip eating failure. Yes, that's how bad it was. Yep, yep, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Guys, you'll have a better montage of me than all the times I made you stop places so I can poop, right? You won't just have a, have a me needing to poop montage, even though literally as we were recording this episode, I stopped. Right, so in the universe of this movie, he's at the grave of Casey and he's, he's like, oh man, okay, I did like a 20 second montage of you in my head just now. That's all I got. Okay, bye. Yeah, <laughs> well... Leaves. And then, okay, so before he leaves, he lays an ugly doll's keychain on the grave. This thing has not been introduced into the movie at any point. Okay, I on Casey my second viewing, yeah. Casey was wearing it in an earlier scene, but he never <laughs> mentions it. They do or not says address it. it. We no. don't know why Luke would have it. It's very <laughs> strange. Christ. Did he pull it out of the, the flaming wreckage? <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> right. the only other option was for him to sprinkle some chips on his grave <laughs> so that it would be ugly doll. Leave a Capri Sun, yeah. So, okay. And then, but see that, so we, I, I, I already came up with a better thing. Leave him a fucking Capri Sun. That would have been so much better. Okay. So much better. <laughs> it's just upside down with the straw going into the, the, the dirt <laughs> next to the grave. It's like an IV. Yeah. yeah. All right. 
So uh, then Luke goes skateboarding to really shitty music. Oh, yeah. If a movie is just montages, at a certain point, you get to stop calling it a movie, right? <laughs> Yeah, you sure do. I'm counting this as 5.5. Okay. It's a skateboarding montage. I'm giving it a half, though. Sure. Yeah. Especially with the music being like, Ugh. very clearly them being like, all right, we want to do like a Simon and Garfunkel thing. But it sounds like Simon and Garfunkel doing a skateboarding montage at fucking gunpoint yeah. improvised. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, all the music is just fucking grating. Also, he shows up at the end of this montage and sees... Pastor Shane with his surfboard. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that counts as the other half. So now we're at six. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Fair. Yeah, because Pastor Shane is very clearly like wrapping up his surfing. So. And I want to talk about this conversation with Pastor Shane. As we're going to learn later in the movie, Pastor Shane was a professional surfer, got in a car accident with his best friend, and his best friend died. Pastor Shane experienced the plot of this fucking movie. And yet, when he comes up to Luke, he's like... Yeah, sorry your friend died. It sucks. Brah. Well, yeah. So, yeah, he's he's super quiet about it. He goes, you know, I lost a friend once. Let me tell you, the pain never goes away. And, I, of course, I'm like, well, that's weird because your job is telling people that death is a gateway to eternal paradise and being sad about losing someone is proof that you don't believe any of that. So, uh, yeah, odd. Odd. Yeah. Imagine being this bad at comforting the grieving as a pastor, <laughs> you have truly one job. One might argue molesting children is a second job, but I truly don't. as a pastor, <laughs> you just have to lie in this moment. Right. And it's a Bronze Age lie. It is literally like, oh, your friend died? No, he didn't. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's not like <laughs> you have to it. come up with a new lie or anything in the moment. <laughs> They've written it down for you. And so, and I love it, this conversation in every way because Luke just at a certain point just starts prompting Shane with the opening line of chick tracks, right? He's like, <laughs> but if I died today, do I even know where I would go? Am I a bad person? Do I know the real dangers of Dungeons and Dragons? It's just such a <laughs> ridiculous conversation. It's, it's the conversation that every youth pastor dreams of. Yep. Oh, at one point, Luke is like, okay, but. I wish like maybe I had died instead, instead of Casey. <laughs> and I wanted the pastor to be like, yeah, but that would, that would fuck up God's plan for killing Emily's dad so she could find you. Yeah. She wasn't going to date Casey. So it didn't I was work. Date. Have you seen that? That, Kitty would, that would really convolute the plan. Yeah. So, <laughs> don't be a dick. This is also where he justifies the name of the movie. He's like, no, man, oh, accepting yeah. Christ into your life is like the ultimate cutback on a wave. And Luke is like, how? And he's like, sky. You should turn around and a cutback. You, you are going in one way and then you're going a different way. And that is it's just like that. That said the, the name of the movie. That's the limited an analogy. And they named the fucking movie after it. It's so sad. <laughs> I also I, I have to explain this to the movie makers in hopes that they're listening along. OK, there's a point here where. Luke says, well, you know, Casey accepted Jesus the, like three seconds before he died. So I know he's in heaven, but I don't know where I'm going to go. And I'm like, OK, Christians, I don't understand why this is complicated for you. If you believe in Christian heaven, you are a Christian. Yeah, right. There are exactly zero people in the entire universe that believe you guys are right about the afterlife, but don't share your religion <laughs> out of spite. There's the it is right. two separate <laughs> circles, guys. It's not a Venn diagram. This is very important. <laughs> OK, I know there was like a big scene here, but I missed all of it because I was just like writing down things I liked about this pastor's physical appearance. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I it took me two yeah, or three. It's true. Two or three okay, watches. His chin, especially, it's chiseled and perfectly rounded. How is yeah. that yes, possible? Yeah. Right? He's geometrically impossibly attractive. <laughs> yeah. like contradiction in terms, impossibly attractive. Yeah. He he looks like he's gonna walk up to you at Abercrombie and tell you you look good in an outfit you don't look good in. Yeah. And then you're gonna walk out and your friends are gonna be like, What the fuck are you wearing? And you're gonna be like, God damn it, Pastor Steve or whatever your name was. <laughs> I thought this upside down rimless hat looked good on me. <laughs> I touched his stubble. What? <laughs> <laughs> but the the jean shorts are pre frayed. Stupid. Stupid. Oh, God, no, this leads to my favorite sentence in all of Heath's notes. <laughs> yeah, I, I realized after this happened, I was like, oh, man, he gave like a really long God speech. 
that I missed because I was looking at his impossible chin. Ah, I'm not going back for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. not, <laughs> I'm not <running. laughs> right. All right. So, so we head back home to check on mom and dad. Dad is a changed man because he made that promise in that other scene. That that plot thread is resolved yeah. now. He called Baxies in the hospital scene, so they're fine now. Exactly. Luke is skateboarding home through the sunset. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. skateboarding is a dumb way to get around. Sorry. Six point five, by the way. Okay, yeah. No. Fair, <laughs> yeah, fair. Fair. I think a shitty band just follows him around. In that reality. would make a yeah. lot of sense. On the actually. giant skateboard. Yep. So yeah, so Luke shows up late for dinner, but dad doesn't yell at him this time because, you know, all the Jesus and stuff. And this time Luke wants to say grace. Oh, and he says the fuck out of that grace. Let me tell you. Boy, doesn't. Does he? He's, I, I wrote down, dear Jesus, thanks for killing Casey. He was kind of holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, hey, no, I'm thankful for one other thing. Lord, thank you for killing Emily's dad. That's a sweet plan. Right. <laughs> it's going great. Got to admit, I had my doubts at first. But <laughs> oh. God, every time this scene comes up and someone's like, oh, my God, that grace was so amazing. I'm just like. Man, being a Christian would be so fucking easy. Yeah. And and so much more money. And profitable. Just to, yeah. Just a reminder, it's still Matreon, everybody. Matreon.com. Matreon. It's <laughs> M-A-Y, as in the month May. Get it? May. <laughs> Treon. Oh, and this part is obviously the fucking, this is the money shot for the Christian granny porn, right? Where he's like, and I want to apologize to my mom and dad for being so rebellious and not appreciating all the hard work <laughs> they did to Christianize me. That part, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Also, just a tiny note. They left the camera on <laughs> during the fading away small talk. So we get way too long after the end of the scene where she's like, so how was school? Yeah, you know, the way, the way. Oh, I know. And then, Is it and still then going? dad panics because he wants to get in on it. He's like, mm, good food. Cut. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, and then, of course, we have to have the making up with Emily scene, apparently. So, like, he runs into her at the pizza place, and she says, hey, and he says, hey, so we know there's another scene on. Yeah. <laughs> he says, hey, 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 what did you order here? And she's like, pizza. We ordered pizza. That's that's all you have. So, cool. So stupid. Yeah. Cool. And then he apologizes. He says, I'm sorry, I was mean about you saying my dead friend is a good thing. Yep. And she says, it's okay. I forgive you. Yeah. I was furious. <laughs> I want to point out that Jessica, our favorite friend and the best person in the movie, she leaves so they can have this one-on-one -on -one scene. She goes, I'm going to go get crushed red peppers. Not red pepper. She's going to get crushed red peppers because she's an asshole. Yeah, right. I don't, I, I'm not going to get grated parmesan. It's, it's just, it's parm. It's, we know what kind of, <laughs> we, we know you're not going to get whole red peppers to put on your fucking pizza. Okay. I sometimes will get a wheel of parmesan. Well, no, that's, you know what fair. that's fair. Like you would have to specify. But yeah. to be fair, you announce <laughs> I'm going to go get a wheel of parmesan <laughs> next door. Sometimes I already have it. <laughs> so yeah no but he shows up uh, Jessica like <laughs> uh, begs off she, he's like hey can we have a conversation she's like anything to shut up this goddamn background music sure he says can you forgive me she says yes so I'm like oh my god it's so lazy <laughs> 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 he's like oh shit do we do we not have a plot again I feel like we don't have a plot again god damn it <sighs> Crap. So, <laughs> How much time is left in the movie? Too fucking long, man. Too yeah. fucking long. Yeah. He's like, oh, so, hey, I wanted to let you know you were right about all this God stuff. And he says, and I quote, I was lost after the accident. And then God gave me a piece. Piece of, piece of what, man? <laughs> so, are you talking mm. about Emily or? <laughs> yeah. Chips. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so he's got to head off to the surf shop. Emily shows back up with her red pepper, and she's like, wow, that was a real lazy wrap-up to you guys' conflict. Oh, you did, wow. they had nothing else, huh? The so movie's over, though, right? We're not just going to go for another 20 minutes about fucking... Oh, we are still running. No, so, okay. Oh, still... Oh, wow. Okay. Hey, I thought you were going to bring a whole red pepper. I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go back? So yeah, so so Luke goes to the surf shop. The guy from the beginning of the movie that he delivered the pizzas to, remember him? His Ugh. name's Nat. Nat. Okay, thank I you. I never up. did catch that. Yeah. So Nat is super stoked that Luke is all Christianized now. 
It's like, man, I was sure you were going to end up being a filthy fucking Muslim, but you're my religion. That's great. I, too, am a Christian. And he's like, why wouldn't you have mentioned that? And he's like, why would I have mentioned that? You were shopping at my surfboard store. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's also this incredibly bigoted line here, right? I don't think, of course, that the writers realized it, where he's like, oh, wow, I never realized you're Christian. And the guy's like, oh, wow, I should try harder. I should be a better Christian. Like, as though you're going to notice a person that's Christian because of how much better than everyone else they are. Right? Right. Clearly the implication. (laughs) Or that he needs to work it into his board wax sales. Just like, oh, you know, this will be fine for like cold weather or hot weather. Hey, do you know where you're going when you die? Okay, you're leaving. You are leaving. (laughs) You a good person? Sorry. No, all right. And this You're is right. also where he does the weird exposition dump about Shane. He was like, yeah, apropos of literally nothing we've been talking about. Yep. The plot of this movie reminds me of the plot of Pastor Shane's movie that we didn't see. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't know if you know this, but Pastor Shane was almost a professional surfer. And then he got into a car accident where his, but you know, dude, this is exactly what happened to you. Word for word. What are the odds? <laughs> Right. A car accident ruined Pastor Shane's surfing career. And there's a long pause. And Nat's like, no, no, but in a good way. I, 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 OK. Yeah, right. Because sometimes yeah. you're going one way and then God's like, nope, you're going another way, motherfucker. Need you to come in on Saturday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but in a good way. In a good, in a- I, I'm not doing this well. <laughs> All right. So so now. Matt shows up to hay himself into another fucking scene, this time at the school library. He's like, hey, your friend's been dead long enough for me to talk shit about the surfing competition now, right? It's been a couple days. Yeah, huh? Okay. Remember me? Surf enemy. You have literally nothing this movie could be about except me now, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and Emily sits down and I'm like, wait, weren't we just in a fucking scene with the two of them where they had nothing to say? Do we we really need another scene? But we do. He has to invite her to his surf tryout. Okay. And again, it's way too early. He's like, yes. you should come to my surf tryout. It's at 7 a.m. My friends, if my newborn son's first sentence was, will you meet me at the beach at 7 a.m.? I'd be like, is there an afternoon? What are the other slots? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll bring cups. <laughs> but he says to Emily, will you come to my surf tryout at 7 a.m.? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she says, are you asking me to come? And he's like, what? Yes. Is that I, I the bell? I mean, <laughs> <just said that. laughs> do you regret any of your regrets? What's wrong with the dialogue? And then we get the greatest exit to a scene that's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, I literally just asked you. That was a uh, an interrogative. And yes, it was. Yep. I asked you. <laughs> she says, OK. He says, awesome. Great. Good. Good. <laughs> Bye. It's so dumb. <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs> Cut. So, okay. So it's the next morning. Luke's heading out to the big surf tryout. And darn it, mom and dad are up so early because they're going to go cheer him on at the tryout. Which Yay. is it was just fucking weird, right? Because it's a tryout. If it was a competition, that would make sense. But it's a fucking tryout. Yeah. Anyway. All, all I wanted at this moment was for dad to get murdered on the job. That's all I was asking <laughs> for. <laughs> Because then, you know, they would move to a different town and then like Emily's mom would have to die so she could go live with her like aunt and uncle in the new town where they moved. I wanted a whole cascade of God (laughs) having to fix his own shit with more murdering. (laughs) All right. So he heads out for the trial and Pastor Shane showed up for his big surf off. And so did Emily. And you were there, Auntie M. And you were there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We get a montage of driving to Oh, you're right. We montage. Do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so half point seven. We're at seven now. I yeah. love during that montage. I guess in in post they felt like it was just a little too boring to watch them drive for a while. So we get dad going. Are you excited about your big tryout? And and the kid going, Yep. <laughs> nailing it. Just, nailing well, it. Good food earlier. Yes. <laughs> yep. And then we arrive at the surfing montage again. This is number eight. Yep. yep. And look, so at this point, we have been building up this goddamn surf tryout the entire time. That's that's essentially what the movie's been about. It is a 36 second montage that is indistinguishable from the other. I'm sorry. How many have we watched at this point? Heath, we are at eight 
All right, so right it's now. indistinguishable from the other seven. There's never a moment where we know which of, like, is that supposed to be Matt surfing? or is it? Because, of course, all the surfing is way in the distance or silhouetted or neck down, right? So we never know who's surfing. We never know who did better. Nothing like that. We watch 36 seconds of it. At one point, somebody almost lands this cool little 180. <laughs> it might as well be Mormon bubble porn of surfing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Yes. And then it's fucking over, and suddenly we cut to Luke delivering pizzas to that surf shop again. Yeah, we yeah. drive away from the surfing montage. Oh, I'm you're right, we do. 5. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Yep. yep, fair. So yeah, so he brings the pizza into the surf shop where apparently they're celebrating who won the tryout, and it ain't fucking Luke. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? Yeah, yeah, because, because they've they decided both now that in. they're gonna like yeah have two extra team slots because why why i had no investment in surf enemy also getting in they both made the team they managed to deflate the already i think thrice deflated plot yes again yeah ultimately they're just nothing murdering ma- these plots. <laughs> the only way they could lower the stakes further is if when surf shop owner starts talking he's like anyways i'm dissolving the surf team <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, because so he brings all the pizza in and he's like, so this is pizza for the entire surf team. Luke, why don't you grab yourself a slice? You're on the team now, too. They give him a T-shirt. They sit him down and I'm like, he's at fucking work, (laughs) right? This is just one of his deliveries. He's got other deliveries. You can't just sit there and be part of your meeting now. All right. I have a surf meeting later. So if coincidentally they order pizzas to that meeting, I'll do that the last 48 seconds of my shift. So I'll just, I won't clock out. I'll just go. (laughs) Jesus. Okay. So, and then when we wrap everything up and this scene, honestly, in 90% of movies, I would skip it. Right. This is just the scene where Emily and Luke are walking along the beach together and their conversation eventually fades out and the credits roll over it. And they have this just banal conversation about like, so are we an item now? Yes, we're an item. Are you going to college? Yes, I'm going to the same college, right? We have that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. At one point, they, at one point, they're too far away to mic, though. They like yes, walk down the right. beach too far away. <laughs> so they have to switch to ADR and it's fucking jarring. Yes. Yeah. And we're watching their mouths moving all wrong at this point. Just have them walking away so I can't see their mouth. Yep. It's, yeah. yeah. But... But we don't skip this scene for one very important reason. Yes. Their little back and forth flirt thingy. Yeah. So at the end of this whole thing, when they get too far away and they run out of dialogue, they start to do this like they try to do this flirt wrestle. But it's so awkward because they hate each other's guts. They have zero chemistry. They worked at the concentration uh, concentration camp camp together and neither of them is willing to get wet. Yes. Right. (laughs) Exactly. So like he pushes her slightly towards the water, but he steadies her as like as he lets her go so that she won't get wet. And then she runs after him. But like he doesn't run away. So there's just this awkward hop. And then she stops running. <laughs> it's just like a minute of like too hard, too hard. Okay. <laughs> oh. At one point he goes to like kick some dirt at her, like kick some wet sand at her. And he's like, that would be an asshole thing to do. I shouldn't Don't. do that. It's so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> It's just watching. It's like we're physically watching them not have chemistry. It's incredible. So (laughs) ellipses the closing montage. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And I guess that's going to do it for our review of Cutback. We made it. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tell you about a movie that we might be watching next week. We're not 100% on this bit, but we're going to go with it anyway. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Sophie's Choice. Yeah, Hotel Rwanda. (laughs) (laughs) No, we'll be watching the third episode of Sons of Thunder. Oh, us lucky bastards. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to be episode 301 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. It's a Patreon. You should really do that. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the Scale the the Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and the Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song goes 
was written and performed by Ryan Slot to give people dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder in another truck next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Emily started seeing someone else at college. So God murdered him with a truck. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep the plan going. The surf team disbanded when they realized that surfing is not a team sport. Pastor Shane, if you're listening, I can be reached at godawfulmovies at gmail.com. <laughs> I'll do some weird shit for you, Pastor Shane. His name is Danny. Danny, hear me out. Evil giraffes on Mars. <laughs> I have an affliction shirt. <laughs> Morgan, what do you taste like? The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.